What's up guys? Hope you're having a good week. This week's blog post, I want to answer a reader comment that I got um, from The Brandman, and he writes, Great stuff. If you're open for suggestions on future topics, I've been wondering if it really matters from a performance standpoint where I start my queries. For example, if I join from A to B to C, would I be better off starting at table B and then going to A and C? Is it weird not to have the table in your from statement in the select statement? So I think this is a great question. I mean, I definitely remember when I was trying to performance tune early on in my SQL writing career um, about not knowing whether changing the order of my tables is going to make a difference in performance or not. So I thought this would make a great topic for this week. This week's video is basically going to be very demo based. So let's get cracking. Just a quick side note. All of the queries we're looking at today are going to be inner joins, all right? We're not going to do any full joins, outer joins, uh, you know, left, right joins. Those types of joins are a whole different animal when it comes to whether it makes a difference or not in terms of the join order. So today we're only looking at inner joins. Keep that in mind and hope you learn something. So the data we're using today in this demo is the Wide World Importers database from Microsoft. And we're basically just gonna be joining three tables here, orders, order lines, and stock items. I've given the row counts of various tables and joins together. And right, so the, the first question we really wanna answer is does the order that tables get joined in matter? Um, so putting kind of SQL Server and how it works aside, uh, just thinking about it, right, we probably want to improve performance by reading less data or as little data as we need. So by looking at these table counts here, right, order lines is kind of our middle table that's got 231,000 rows. Orders at the top has 73,500 and stock items at the bottom has 227,000. Um, and that even gets limited further down if we filter on country of manufacture for USA products only, that limits that table to only eight rows. Just from like a logical standpoint, uh, it kind of makes sense that if you want your queries to run quickly, you want them to have to read as little extra data as possible. And the way you would do that, right, is with changing the order of these table joins, right? It would probably be fastest to join stock items with this filter, which only has eight rows, to order lines, right, which has 231,000 rows first to reduce these 231,000 rows as much as possible. If we do that, taking the counts already, that brings us down to 1,036 rows. Once we have those two tables joined together, we can join two orders, which was the original 73,000 rows, right, because that'll be less work that SQL Server will have to do in joining that data, right? Contrast that with if we joined orders and order lines first, we would get no reduction in rows. We would still have 231,000 rows um, contending there because order lines, right, doesn't filter out any of the rows, which we would then have to join, you know, we're already joining two large tables and now we're gonna have to join it with a third table. We're not really getting any performance gain. So now the question becomes, does SQL Server take into account the order of the tables in our from clause for how it does joins? So we could very easily take a look at this by just running our query here, where I'm gonna include my execution, my execution plans already included. We're gonna run that, take a look at it. And even though our tables are in the in order of orders, order lines, stock items, our execution plan shows something different, right? Stock items and order lines gets joined first um, because once again, that kind of reduces the number of rows needed for the rest of the query to get processed so things are gonna be faster. And after these two get joined together here, SQL Server then joins in the orders table. So we could see that SQL doesn't necessarily follow the order of the tables listed in the from statement. And the reason for this is because SQL is a declarative language, right? There's declarative languages and there's procedural languages. In a declarative language like SQL, you are specifying what data you want, right? So all our SQL queries are always talking about what do we want? We're not really defining how do we want that data to get pulled. Contrast that with a procedural language like C Sharp or something where we're actually defining how to retrieve data from you know, where we're getting it from. Because of that, SQL Server doesn't really take into account the order of the tables in your from statement. It will decide on its own what it thinks is a optimal plan um, at runtime. There's something called the query optimizer, which does some calculations to try to figure out a, a fast plan uh, to retrieve the data for you. That's what kind of determines how the data is gonna uh, come from the database, from the disk, as opposed to you programming specifically how to get that data. 
So the query optimizer in this case kind of decided that joining stock items with order lines first would be more efficient because that's significantly reducing the amount of rows that we then need for the rest of our query uh, to join with orders in the second round of joins. So the question becomes if the query optimizer is deciding for us, do we have any influence over uh, saying which order the table should be joined? Um, so we, since we know the query optimizer is currently kind of picking the most optimal query, in these next examples we're going to take a look at, we're going to try to force an inefficient join pattern. We're going to try to enforce the order of table joins uh, by doing an inefficient join pattern. And so first we can look at if we just change the order of these tables where order lines is first, orders is second, and stock items is third, does it actually change the join order? If we look at the execution plan, we see the answer is no. We still have stock items and order lines getting joined first and then orders gets joined after that. Next example, in this query we're trying to enforce the join order by adding parentheses. Does that do anything for us? Um, so inside the parentheses, kind of thinking of mathematical order of operations, we're hoping that order lines and orders will get joined first, stock items will get joined afterwards. If we run the query and look at the execution plan, what does it show? No change, same thing, stock items and order lines get joined first, orders comes after that. So now, what if we take a different approach and try to uh, enforce the order by writing a subquery? So here I've written a subquery where order lines and orders get joined first, and that to this whole subquery, then we're gonna join stock items. Is that gonna work? Well, if we run it, no, nope. the query optimizer doesn't care. If we look at the query, right, stock items, order lines are getting joined first, and then orders gets joined afterwards. So the SQL Server Optimizer in all these cases um, is picking what it thinks is the best plan. We have no real influence over what order the tables get joined in. And the way that the query optimizer decides what order to join the tables in is by using statistics, right? So statistics get calculated on your indexes and tables to help the query optimizer very quickly make educated guesses about how it should be getting the data out of the database. Now, if you're getting an execution plan that you know is maybe not optimal, right? Like, so for example, if we looked at these execution plans where stock items wasn't getting joined until the end, we could make a good guess based on row counts that that's probably not the optimal way that these tables should get joined. And so when that happens, the first thing I always look at are the stats on the table. I'm not gonna go into more detail than that in this video. I've included some links in my blog post to help you troubleshoot those issues. But usually if you're getting performance problems, um, Instead of trying to enforce join orders and things like that, the first thing to look at really are your stats to see if they're all out of whack causing SQL Server to generate suboptimal query plans. But let's say you've already looked at stats, right? You've checked your statistics, you've checked your indexes, everything's set up correctly like it should be. Um, there's nothing that you can really fix or adjust, uh, but SQL Server is still giving you inefficient joins. You know that by enforcing a specific join order, you'll get better performance. So what are some options that we have for actually doing that? So my favorite option is a trick that I saw in a presentation by Adam Mechanic on forcing uh, row goals. And so I've linked to his blog post down below too. This is a really cool trick. It's, a, it's more than just one trick, right? It's a whole series of tricks. He's got a whole presentation about it. I uh, really recommend you watching it. It's you will have a new amazing superpower by being able to do these kinds of queries. But in this example I'm gonna show you here, I use one of those tricks to force a join order. And the way I do that is I do my subquery again here, joining orders and order lines, which we know in this case is inefficient, but we wanna try to, inf we wanna try to enforce a join, just so it turns out that in this demo it's gonna be an inefficient join. And where that didn't work before with just a subquery, what we can do is add this top clause with a really big number in there, with a number that we know is larger than the total number of rows that are gonna be coming back from our table. And what that'll do is that will, in fact, force a join order, right? So if we look at the execution plan now, we're joining orders with order lines first, and then right, that comes up here, and then finally our next join here is happening with stock items. So by using this top uh, clause trick, right, in a subquery, we are forcing SQL Server uh, to join those two tables first. 
And I really like this technique because it is only forcing the join order of these two first tables, right? So in this query, we only have three tables total, but imagine we had five or 10 tables. With other techniques, forcing a join order is gonna enforce the order that all the tables are in. And we'll take a look at that in a second here. So it's only gonna force the join on the two tables that we specify, and it's gonna leave the rest of the query alone. And I really like this because if your data changes over time, right, what might be a good join order today might not be a great join order tomorrow. And whereas if you're forcing a join order between two tables, you might be able to kind of predict what's gonna happen. Is that order gonna be good long term or not? Um, whereas if you're forcing, you know, 10 tables or something like that to be joined in a certain order, more likely than not, the data is gonna change over time and the, that order isn't gonna be optimal eventually, right? Making your query actually run slower. So that technique is my favorite way of doing it. That's the one that I would definitely go to if I need to enforce a join order because I can't fix my performance problems, you know, through other means like statistics. Um, but sometimes it's, you know, it's still this, this method still requires some testing, some playing around with. Um, if I'm encountering a production issue and I just need a query to run fast, I know it's getting a bad execution plan, I don't have time to really troubleshoot it, I may use a query hint or a join hint to enforce my table join order. And the way I do that is it's very simple, right? So we have our query here and at the very end we just said option force order. If we run that, look at the execution plan, once again we see orders and order lines getting joined together first and then stock items gets joined second. Once again, we've enforced a suboptimal join order. The problem here is, right, and it's not noticeable because there's only three tables, is that by using this query hint, the order of all our tables is forced. So once again, if we had five or 10 tables, it's not just our first two that would be forced together. It's the order of all of the tables, right, that's gonna be forced once again, maybe causing something to break long term. The same thing happens if you use a join hint, right? So in this case, so in this case, I've added a inner loop join. If we run it, we'll see our execution plan. So not only is it forcing some loop joins here, um, it's also forcing the orders and order lines to get joined first and then stock items get joined afterwards. Um, once again, all of the table join orders are enforced when you're using a join hint like this, could lead to problems. And especially forcing a join hint, um, like loop join, um, could lead to even more problems, right? Because it's, it's way more sensitive to data changes. If your data in, in one of those tables that's being loop joined uh, suddenly gets a lot more rows in it, you're gonna start experiencing some serious performance problems. So I only use these query and join hints in like, uh, you know, my production servers are on fire, I need to fix a problem quickly. I'll use one of these hints uh, just to kind of get things under control. And then once things calm down, I always go back and get rid of them and figure out the underlying cause for the performance problem um, and fix that instead. So I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Um, it's a topic I really enjoy. And you know what you got out of it, I hope is that you can't really enforce the join order by default in SQL Server. In certain scenarios, you might want to, and there's good ways of enforcing a join order and there's less optimal ways of enforcing a join order through query hints. So be careful with what you do there. So thanks for watching this week. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe below. For those of you in the US, happy Thanksgiving this week. Hope you're uh, taking a bunch of time off and relaxing from work. And I'll see you again next week. Thanks.